Right. Three boxes. They didn't need to be so big, but they're protected, so I'm happy. I've had a fun package sent from Fujifilm UK, which, uh, yeah, really surprised me. Uh, let's get these open. No switchblades around here. We have the proper tools. So I thought whilst I'm unboxing these, I could just give a bit of an update and a bit of a run through of what's been happening because I've actually been back in London for the last like three months or so now. And uh, I know it's taken a while finishing the Thailand videos. Um, and I've taken a bit of time off from filming and editing and other stuff because I've been busy on other things. And uh, yeah, thought I'd run through some updates whilst showing you some new equipment from Fujifilm. Huh? Oh, there's a button. <laughs> cool. So, interesting. Okay. This uh, this is the big boy. This is the 150 to 600 f 5.62 to 8. Yeah, all of this is on loan, by the way. Uh, I've only got this for a couple of weeks or so. Funnily enough, they reached out to me and just said, "Hey, do you wanna do you wanna try some stuff?" And I was like, "Sure. All right." So I've not actually seen any new Fuji lenses or tried any of them for like two and a bit years or so. So this is the main event, the Fuji X-H2S. Uh, as you will have known on the channel, I was a diehard X-H1 fan, uh, had the X-H1 from launch day, used it as a complete walkhorse, walk used it as a complete workhorse um, across my channel and loads of images, some of my favorite images all taken on the X-H1. Uh, was a bit of a, a forgotten camera series. I don't think it got enough love. Um, so it's great to see the X-H2. Uh, this is the S version. The X-H2 isn't actually out yet. Great to have that big grip again. That was one of the things that I loved about the X-H1. Um, and uh, the X-T4 has a bit of a shallower grip, which is also nice, but I, th I think this is, is more comfortable. We're lacking the dials though. Um, so we've got a PSAM dial, which uh, personally, I think having aperture on the lens is gonna be perfect for me, um, as always. So I don't think it's gonna affect me all that much. I'll be running through how I use these, this camera um, in some future videos, I'm sure. And the final box, another lens. Now, if you remember in my last video from Thailand, um, which funnily enough was filmed like three months ago, in that video, I mentioned directly to Fujifilm. I said, hey, Fujifilm, I'd love to try the brand new 33mm f1.4 and this is not it. <laughs> we have another one. I said, hey Fujifilm, I'd love to try the brand new 33mm f1.4, which is this. Um, I'm glad that was in there. I had a little panic for a second then. As you all know, 35mm f2 is my favorite lens thus far. Um, so I'm really keen to try this. Obviously it's bigger than the 35mm f2, um, but it's still actually smaller than I thought. It's actually really quite portable. Uh, the other lens, by the way, is a 16 to 55 It's a very different feeling of Fujifilm as a camera. Um, but again, that sort of like powerful workhorse that I love about the X-H1, has that same feeling here. Um, and as much as these are marketed with like video focus, I still predominantly use Fujifilm for photography. Um, but I think I will be trying some video stuff on this. Um, I've always had some difficulties with video on Fujifilm because of the lenses. Uh, I actually did a, a podcast with Fuji Love recently um, and discussed a lot of my sort of background on which cameras I use for video, for photo and other stuff. Um, so I'll leave a link in the description to that because it was, it was a fun podcast to do and um, it's actually quite an open and sort of vulnerable discussion at times. So I think you might uh, you might enjoy that. Oh, that's new. The, uh, the auto mode on the aperture now has a lock button on the ring. So you can't accidentally move from auto. And therefore, if you lose, use it with a camera like this, where you could probably set your aperture with the dial if you preferred, you just set it to A. That's a new uh, design language there. Thumbstick also a little bit more, a bit more tactile. Feels less um, delicate, I guess. And glad to see that there is still 
Fuji cameras with the D-pad. They started removing them on some of the cameras and I wasn't too happy about that. The little, uh, what are these? The, are these called the lug, lug nuts? Lug channel? Lug? Wide enough, super easy to get a strap in and out. You're not fiddling around. Uh, so <laughs> this lens, uh, I, I didn't actually request this lens. They just wanted to send it. Um, if I'm honest, I don't know how much I will use it. Um, but I mean, I do love a telephoto lens. Uh, we'll see how it goes. It's not as heavy as it looks, which is an interesting thing. It's definitely longer than my big, uh, my old Canon 70 to 200, but similar in sort of, sort of heft. <laughs> this lens, the 16 to 55 f 2.8, uh, always been interested to try this one. Um, it's their, what do they call it? The red badge. I think they've only got about three red badge lenses, which I think is their, what they deem as like their super, super sharp, um, like optimal coating. To be honest, I've never really come across a Fuji lens that isn't sharp. Likewise, I've never tried any of the XC lenses, so I'm not sure about those. But yeah, this uh, seems like a great lens. It doesn't have optical image stabilization though, which is the one thing that has always put me off because um, I've always wondered if it'd be good for video. Fully weather sealed, if I'm not mistaken. And yep, it is weather resistant. Uh, that's what the WR means on the lens, by the way. And yeah, all the way to F 2.8. Oh, I'm going to have to set up all my settings again. <laughs> so I need like a, I don't know, biscuits or whatever. Just get crumbs all down there. Sound setup. There we go. That's nicer. This is a big camera. This is different to, to other Fujifilm, but it's for a different user. It really makes the other cameras look slim. The cameras themselves are getting bigger again. Ergonomics of our hands is never gonna change. So we are always gonna end up retreating back to having bigger cameras to have those extra features. Okay, yeah, so X-H2S, I'm gonna be playing with that um, on the channel, uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks whilst I've got this. Um, out and about in London, give me something new to talk about and play with. Um, but also, I wanted to run through, I guess, some updates on the channel because, as you can probably tell, uh, I've had some changes around here. Um, some playing around with some new colours, some new sort of like branding, just kind of updating things and taking stuff to the next stage. Um, I've been thinking a lot about how this channel is sort of running, and I think the direction I want to take things is a little bit more informal because I think that then gives me time to focus on the bigger projects that I want to do. Whereas I consistently find myself in this middle ground where I'm struggling to do the bigger stuff and I can't get this stuff out fast enough. At the same time, over the past uh, few weeks or so, um, throughout the summer, my big summer project has been to rebuild uh, my online store and my website. Got a whole new destination for my store and coming soon will be a series of prints. Uh, I've been wanting to do prints for years it's never felt like the right time. It's always felt like there's been, you know, more development and I've wanted to do it right. I wanted to do it at the highest quality achievable that's still accessible. And I think I found my perfect setup. I've been working on this for a long time and it's so almost ready. Um, so I'm very happy and very excited for that. But in the meantime, the new store is live. Uh, you can go and check it out for the digital products. So things like the titles that you see on the screen. Um, always so proud of those. So new prints coming soon. Uh, some hopefully more videos, uh, more frequent videos, and uh, a whole lot of other ideas to put everything in perspective. Uh, it's been tough the last couple of years, and every time I come back to London, uh, or rather spend a long time here, it gives me a lot of time to reflect and, and do other things and find where I want to be and other stuff. And I think traveling, um, you know, the trips that we've done since COVID have really highlighted that that is exactly where I want to be. So I want to try and make that as achievable as possible. Still waiting on Japan, but that's the big goal. Anyway, uh, so that's my first little look at these. Um, I will dive deeper in another video uh, going forward. Thanks for sticking around. See you soon. I'm going to have a whisper cold. Do you want one? Mm. Yeah. You still have a present? Mm -hmm. Do you want a whisper guard? I bought four. So two of you can have one. Oh, maybe I'll have one later. So I've got one going. <laughs> I do love whisper. Whisper was one of my childhood favorites. 
Whisper Gold, admittedly, not as much. They're like an after school treat. Mm. I was going to say a lunchbox, but they're too luxury for a lunchbox. Yeah. This is like a. It's Friday as well. <laughs> this is a Friday treat. No, I've got. Not bad. 